Hey guys, this is Shayna from yummyyarns.com and we're back with day three of our toe up socks class. So we have already covered cast on the toe, which had a whole lot of tutorials tucked inside there for make ones and on making sure your, twist, your stitches aren't twisted and all sorts of things. <laughs> uh, so go back and catch that video if you haven't watched that one already because that's how we'll get started. Um, we made our toe. Yesterday we talked about um, making the foot, which is simple stockinette, but if you're new to this, there's a lot of things in there that we still discuss that are pretty important. Um, like making sure you know which side is going to be on the top of your foot and which side is going to be on the bottom of your foot. And uh, those are, um, all gonna be those other videos are gonna be linked down below um, but today we're done with our foot we're done with our toe now we're going to do our heel uh, before we get rolling here I wanted to let you guys know um, we're using our suburban stitcher sock yarn this is the sea smoke colorway and it's so pretty don't you just love how it's knitting up oh, I absolutely love it um, and Diane, who is the dyer behind Suburban Stitcher, uh, sent this yarn to me for free to do the tutorials, which was super awesome of her. Uh, she's our featured dyer for the Indie Sock Along for the month of January. It's $2 to join the Sock Along, and you get one pattern each month for the rest of the year. Um, and each month we're featuring a new dyer. So it's a great way to um, get some new sock patterns added, added into your library and a great way to meet some fun new dyers. Um, today we're going to be doing a new technique where we're actually going to be making a contrast colored heel. So we have our sea smoke colorway here and if you've watched my cuffs down sock class you'll be familiar with this one. This is the clean slate colorway and it's this pretty denim blue that's going to be great with the sea smoke. I'm so excited. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to scooch our clean slate ball off to the side for a minute. And I'm going to put that one over here. So we're going to get things set up. Um, I usually will knit across one row, one row cause um, usually I'll have started with my patterning first and then I'll have the stockinette on the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do here um, in the pattern that I have written for you. It'll tell you to knit across this row. Um, and then you can decide if you want, you can break the yarn um, or leave it attached. Um, since it's just the heel that we're doing as a contrast, I'm going to leave ours attached so that um, it'll be ready for us when we go back to do the rest. And I'm just gonna quick knit across the top of our sock here. And again, this is uh, if you had a pattern going on in your sock, this is where it's really important to decide which side your heel goes on because you don't want your heel to be on the top of your sock. <laughs> so likewise, if uh, when you were starting your sock, your pattern stitches were the second half of your stitches, you would actually just go straight into the heel on this portion. You wouldn't bother knitting across because um, that would just not work very well. You just want to make sure that the heel goes with the stockinette portion. So today we're going to be doing a short row heel and I'm going to be showing you my preferred method of working short rows, which is the German short row. And it's kind of a fun uh, way of working short rows. It's, there's also the wrap and turn method and there's um, Japanese short rows and a few other ways to, that you can do short rows. But this one is what I like because it's nice and simple and it's basically invisible. So, we are on our second half of the stitches. Oops, sorry guys. And I'm going to now move sea smoke off to the side because we will not be using that. And I've got 
my clean slate ball here and I've got my tail and when we do a contrast heel all that means is that we're going to be knitting the heel stitches in a different color yarn from our main color so to do that you can um, if it if it's helpful if you're new at this you can just tie a quick knot between these two to keep them kind of together um, I'm not going to just for the sake of trying to keep things kind of tidy on camera for you. Uh, and we're going to just start knitting. So make sure you leave yourself a little bit of a tail. Um, and I like to weave in my ends as I go. So I'm gonna show you my little trick for doing that. Uh, so that you don't get a hole, you wanna make sure that your tail kind of wraps around your normal yarn. See how I've got it where the tail kind of catches it? That way uh, they kind of cinch up together. So I knit my first stitch just normally and then on my second stitch, I'm gonna give myself a good length of tail. My second stitch, I am actually, here, we'll zoom in so you can see this part really good because this is kind of where the fun parts happen. So we're going to insert our needle as if to knit. We're going to take our tail, make sure that we've caught our main yarn we're going to lift the tail up and wrap it around the needle going the wrong way. We're going to catch our working yarn, just like we're knitting it, bring the tail back over. So the tail is now wrapped around the top there. See that? And now we're going to pull that knit stitch through. So back here, we've actually got where our tail is wrapped right behind the stitch that we just knit. And now we're going to knit the next stitch normally and insert as if to knit. And we're gonna do that trick with our tail again because see when we knit the stitch normally, it secured our tail right in with that stitch so it's hidden, but it's also woven in. So now we're going to take our tail again. We're gonna wrap it around our needle the wrong way. Then we're gonna go and grab our working yarn the right way. Bring our needle or our tail around and off so that it's wrapped around the working yarn. Then we're gonna pull the working yarn through and finish that stitch and then Remember, we have to knit the next stitch so that that tail gets cinched in there. And there you go. See, you can barely see it there. So this is where it was wrapped. This is where it's secured. This is where it's wrapped. And this is the stitch where it's secured. So we're gonna do that one more time. Insert as if to knit. Grab the tail, wrap it the wrong way around the needle. Wrap the working yarn the right way around the needle, bring the tail off so that it's wrapped around the working yarn, finish your stitch off the needle, tail is wrapped, knit your next stitch and it's secured in there. And you can barely tell that we've been weaving in our ends. It's nice and hidden. So what we're going to do for now that you've got that little mini tutorial to distract you from <laughs> doing our uh, short row heel, uh, we're going to actually knit across, let's see, 31 stitches, because I'm working a 64 stitch sock. So I'm gonna knit almost all the way to the end. And I'm gonna keep securing my tail as I go. So on a 64 stitch sock, 
that means I have 32 stitches back here that I'm working across. So essentially we are working all the way to the stitch right before oops, there it is, the end of the row. And that's probably enough stitches wrapped and woven in for that end. So that end is done being woven in. And now when I'm finishing up my sock, all I have to do is go back and just clip that thread so that it's closer to the actual fabric. And that end is all woven in and finished and secured. And you can use that same trick for other things, um, like for purl stitches and lace and stuff. It just gets more complicated the more things you add into <laughs> to the patterning. Uh, so that's for a different video, not for this one. Okay, so we've worked all the way across our heel stitches to the very last one. And now we're going to work a German short row. So to work a German short row, we're going to knit that stitch and then we're going to slide it right back onto the left needle and bring our yarn to the front and wrap it around like that so it pulls the stitches from the row below around the left needle and it looks like you have two stitches that are crossed weird. That is exactly what we want. We want it to look crossed weird and the wrong color. <laughs> that's where it's kind of nice doing this in the contrast color so you can see the difference. But that's how you set up your German short row on a knit side. So now we're going to turn our work and see it really looks like two stitches on this side. But it's all one stitch. And we're just going to let it be. So now, let's get out of there, yarn. There we go. So now we're going to purl across. And so that it's a little bit less obnoxious than my finger going in front. I'm gonna try and, uh, there we go. Nope. <laughs> I'm learning a new method of purling so that the videos aren't quite as awkward, but if I'm still learning while I'm doing the video, it doesn't help much. Yep. Trying to keep from having my fingers right in the way all the time for you guys. Right now I'm just purling, so whatever nonsense I'm doing, just know that all this is is purling. There we go. Just trying to minimize the motions of my left index finger so that it's not constantly swiping right in front of the screen for you guys. You'll notice uh, once we get to the stitches that we um, did the wraps on, they work just the, or the weaving in the ends on, they work exactly the same as just standard stitches. So you don't have to worry that you have to do anything fancy when you go back to work those stitches or anything like that. You just work them like normal. Oops, what did I do? There we go. Okay, so, all right, so we made it all the way to our last stitch. Now, we are going to do a German short row on this side. So it's kind of the same thing, purl your stitch pats it back to the left hand side and then pull the yarn around the needle so it pulls that stitch from below up and over and around and it looks
looks like two stitches. Your working yarn is actually between the two needles. And then we're going to turn it again so you can see from this side. Let me get that extra yarn out of the way. Maybe. Come on. You don't need to be in there. Oh, we'll bring the whole ball in. That's helpful. There. Okay, so we turn it around so you can see. There's our stitch from the row below. And our working yarn is ready to work the next stitch. You can see we did a good job of cinching up this yarn so we won't have a hole there. Everything's nice and connected because all we have to do is tighten that and everything cinches right back into place. And now we're ready to work our next row. So for the next row, we're just gonna work across to the stitch right before our German shore row. So this stitch, and we'll knit across this way to this stitch. And we're just gonna keep going back and forth and back and forth to the stitch right before our German shore row. So I know that can be a little bit confusing. Um, I do have a step-by-step -step photo tutorial for the German short rows if you need more of a stop and start setup. Um, and I'll link to that uh, below and on my um, blog page for this tutorial and for this lesson. Um, and the links for everything, again, will be right below this video in the show notes uh, portion. So we're just gonna keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, making our short rows smaller and smaller and smaller until we have, um, for this size, about eight stitches between the short rows. You don't wanna go until you have zero because then you just have a point and nobody has pointy heels. Um, <laughs> so we wanna leave a little bit of a space. I tend to leave the amount of space that I had for my cast on for my toes. So like for this size, I had a 16 stitch cast on, which meant I had eight stitches on each needle. So that means when I'm doing my heel, I want to go until I have eight stitches unworked between the needles, because we're only working on half the stitches here, not all 64. So eight stitches for one needle on the cast on, eight stitches between the German short rows before we start going back the other way and picking up the German short rows. But that's gonna be for tomorrow's video. So for today, we're just gonna finish, oops, setting up our German short rows, working back and forth, and then tomorrow we'll do the second half of the heel where we pick up the German short rows and continue on with our sock. All right, I hope you guys had a great time. And if you have questions, you can always send me a message, comment below, uh, however you wanna get a hold of me that way. And I will see you in tomorrow's video. Happy knitting.